Hello, my name is Kinga and today I'm going to give you short and sweet book recommendations. Okay, maybe not always sweet, but definitely short, because sometimes all of us are in a reading slump or just need a short book to boost that Goodreads reading challenge, so that's what I'm here for today. I'm going to be recommending to you a few books that are under 300 or actually usually under 250 pages so we can fly through them. So without further ado, let's get into the books. The first book that I'm going to recommend to you is The Years by Annie Echno. Annie Echno won the Nobel Prize in Literature last year. Her books have been finally translated in, into Polish, this one being translated by Krzysztof Jarosz and Magdalena Budzińska, but there have been new pretty editions of her books, so I got curious, especially since the Nobel Prize in Literature is something big. It's like a crown on a writer's career, so of course I got interested. And also this book has been circulating on Polish booktube. One booktuber that I really trust has read and recommended this, so I got curious. And I'm so glad that I decided to pick the years but also other stories by Annie Echno up because these were great. The years, as the title suggests, talks about the years uh, that Annie Echno and her generation have gone through. Since 1940, when Annie Echno was born, uh, she talks about her experience, her growing up in France in a little city uh, as the first child uh, in the family that finishes university. And she talks about all these experiences, which are deeply personal in a way that seems very open and relatable to all of us. I don't know how she does it, but she takes the emotions from the very common experiences like being bullied in school or having a little bit difficult relationship with your parents who are sometimes very lovely to you and you spend a lot of time with them, but then you fight about like small things that don't really matter in the end just because you have a little bit different values and different experiences. And she talks about all of those in such a beautiful way, but also in such a simple way. Ani Echno has a talent of choosing just the most important words and sentences to describe something that is so grand that I would never be able to just say it in one sentence, but she does, and she really hits the spot. But besides the writing being very beautiful, it's also very grasping. I was surprised by how easy it was to fall into her writing, to understand, to get into her skin, and even though this story is very frown settled, uh, it's still very universal and very beautiful, and first of all, understandable for people who haven't grew, grown up in the same experiences that Annie Echno has. I also recommend her other works and other stories because they do give more background about Annie Echno, uh, where she grew up, her relationships with uh, her um, parents, for example. So I do recommend other Annie Echno books before you read the years, but I genuinely think that this is like a crown, that this is her best work. She is a writer that's worth checking out, so if you were considering it, this is my push for you to actually do it. Next up, I have another novelist, and that is Toni Morrison with The Bluest Eye. This edition was translated by Kaya Guto. It's the new edition and it's very pretty, and I'm obsessed. And I'm equally obsessed with this book, because it was amazing. If you have been living under a rock and don't know what The Bluest Eye is about, uh, it's a story of a black girl who wants to have blue eyes to be pretty, uh, because the societal norms suck and she thinks that the only way that she can be perceived as pretty is if she were blue-eyed and blonde. Of course, that's not the case. And what this book does amazingly is describe the black experience in such a powerful and descriptive way. And for me, it was like entering a whole different world because 
it was just so full of detail, so written with so much heart that I just was totally grabbed into it. The writing in this book is absolutely stunning. It's either very beautiful, a little bit etherical and poetic, or it's very down to earth with many uh, slang inserts. And all of this makes up a very powerful story about, about racism, pedophilia, and very much lack of understanding to a different to another person. But despite the very difficult topics, this book was very captivating and truly held my attention and I really couldn't stop while reading this book. It was very easy to read this book and get the joy out of it because it's both full of joy and of the ugly parts of the society and I think that Tony Morrison just connected all of those things beautifully. Now maybe something a little bit more lighthearted. Wait, this book isn't lighthearted at all. It literally talks about death. I'm sorry, I just don't read happy books. The next book that I'm going to be recommending is If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura, translated by Eric Sellard. In this story, we follow a postman that gets diagnosed with brain tumor grade 4. He knows that he doesn't have much time on earth anymore, and one day, a devil dressed in a Hawaiian shirt appears on his doorstep and proposes him a deal. If he makes one thing disappear from earth, he gets one day to live longer. The deal doesn't sound very dangerous or anything, right? Actually, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I would go for it. If it were something as easy or not very necessary, like chocolate or clocks, which are the first things that uh, our main character makes disappear. However, one day the devil proposes that cats disappear from this world. And that is when the conflict starts in this book. While this is a philosophical story about the value of life and how we, we should cherish our lives a little bit more, it also talks about familial relationships and the love that we have for our pets. In this case, it is cats. I also adore cats. I do have one on my own. But um, just imagining cats disappearing from this world was a little bit disturbing and scary. And it was also that for the main character, because for him, having cats disappear from the world would mean losing memories that he had with his mother. Their cat was something that bonded them. And it was described absolutely beautifully. This was a very short but worthwhile read and you can very much fly for this book because it's short, it's sweet, and it's also sad. It has it all. And the last book that I want to talk about is The Death of Vivek Oji by Ekwiki Emezi, translated into Polish by Rafał Lisowski. And this book talks about a boy whose dead body has been brought to his parents' doorstep. In this book, we follow his family as they're navigating through grief and as they're discovering what has happened to Vivek Oji and why is he dead. It was one of my favorite books of last year and I teared up while speaking on it on camera because I was so moved by emotion. It was very easy to get through. Once I have started it, I couldn't really put it down because the story of Vivek but also his family starting from the moments that his parents have met was genuinely a, such an interesting story and we follow a very interesting cast of characters, especially Osita. I have a soft spot for him. This book has acquainted me with a new culture and what I loved about this was the little moments and little groups that this book has fleshed out. Like there were the moms that were talking and like sewing together doing 
the homey stuff and they were spilling the tea and that was genuinely lovely seeing how these women talk about their experiences and even like small ones like having fights with their kids or how their husbands um, cheat on them that's the not small part <laughs> The traditions and different celebrations were very cool elements of this book and it was fun to get to know those. But definitely the most prominent and important part of this book is Vivek and his relationship with the people around him. And that was heartbreaking. But this book was amazing, beautifully written and easy to get through. But it has one flaw and that is incest. I absolutely do not understand why was it even interwoven into the story because I think it was absolutely necessary and had the Romans here not been incest, this book definitely would have been a no complaints five star. But either way, this book was absolutely beautiful and brilliant and it spoke to me on different levels that I just haven't really discovered in myself before and I have marked many quotes because the moments here are just so beautiful man so beautiful so these were the books that I wanted to talk to you about today short and sweet reads under 300 pages that you can fly through I hope that you enjoyed and that you will pick up some of my recommendations if you haven't read them yet because they are genuinely amazing and that's all that I wanted to talk to you about in this video and see you in my next one. Bye!